Hey everyone, um, it's a pleasure to be here to see your faces. Uh, it's actually my first time in the beautiful city of Montreal, which coincides to be my first time attending the BOSS conference. Um, okay. So um, I'm just going to go straight right into my talk. I'm sure most of you have heard of antimicrobial resistance. It's not news to you. Uh, we know the AMR is a global threat and, you know, there's been a lot of health associated, health care associated um, you know, infections, uh, which is rising as you know, we progress in time. And recent estimates also shows that about 1.3 million deaths are associated with AMR globally. And this um, also been predicted that by 2025, so 2050, that's about 25 years from now, there could be about 10 million deaths associated with AMR, which is quite shocking. I really like this infographic because you know it shows you the picture of you know um, the deaths I say with AMR and other um, you know diseases and even road traffic accidents and most especially cancer, which you know has a lot of attention these days. And with the prediction it shows that the scale at which we see cancer deaths currently is what would see AMR in the future. And um, if unchecked, AMR could actually shave about 3.4 trillion US dollars from you know the GDP annually and push about 24 million people into extreme poverty in the next decade, which shows, you know, it's, we have to take this very seriously. And traditionally, in the public health side of things, um, scientists would use what we call this dietitian test to actually test for the presence or absence of antimicrobial resistance. And this is true in you know, growing the, micro, the bacteria in the lab. And usually what they would do is they would um, make use of what we call um, you know, um, an agar plate, and then they'll have future, future paper with um, antibiotics, you know, positioned around the agar plate. And what they would do is trick the bacteria across the agar and let it grow for 24 hours. And this usually is like a gold standard and it's usually very successful. And what we usually find is a zone of inhibition um, around the area where you put the filter paper. And that shows that, you know, the antibiotics can actually kill the bacteria. But in some other cases, you can have resistant bacteria, just like the A, which I have here, where the bacteria would grow across the future paper, which shows that it's resistant. And um, in as much as this has been successful and it's the gold standard, there's been some you know, challenges across using this method because some labs might not be able to adopt this properly because you know, they're just starting out and reproducibility can actually be an issue in many cases. Um, so we all know next generation sequencing has been really pivotal in the way we see pathogen genomics. And the one example is the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic, which happened quite a few years ago. And scientists were able to like, you know, monitor variants as they, um, you know, introduced into the community in real time. And we've also seen other cases where genomics has been used to monitor um, AMR outbreaks such as cholera, and you know, even wastewater sampling that many labs are you know, involved in these days where they can actually see um, antimicrobial resistance in the community by taking a pool of sample from effluent. And uh, many tools have actually been developed to actually you know, predict and detect antimicrobial resistance in genomic data, and uh, such as AMR Finder Plus, RGI, CARD, some of you must have used these tools before if you're in this area of work. However, there's a challenge with this work because these only amplify or detect AMR in bacteria that are well studied, like E. coli, Salmonella, and Mycobacterium tuberculosis. However, there's some bacteria that are not well studied, and which is what I'll be talking about today, which is non tuberculosis mycobacteria, or NTM for short. So this is um, a species of uh, mycobacteria. They are understudied and um, they're usually found in the environment. So water you drink, even the soils, um, your soil around the, your garden, and even formites also. So they're everywhere basically. And they're opportunistic pathogens. Unlike mycobacterium tuberculosis, the human adapted pathogens, these are opportunistic and they can cause disease in people who are immunocompromised or even healthy people also. And um, the caveat is they're also difficult to treat due to the intrinsic AMR uh, nature. So um, usually when people are infected with NTMs, they can be on long course of antibiotics for 12 months or even longer than that. And it's usually 
uh, cases of reinfection of anti-M, even after you treat them. So um, why do we really care about NTM? One of the reasons is um, this statistic is from Public Health Ontario shows that about 73% of um, infections from NTMs are associated or caused by the avium species and then followed by abscesses and many others like fortuitum and there are quite a number of these as well. And um, it's on the rise, just like I mentioned at the start of my talk, um, there's been about 2.5 fold increase of NTM infections in Ontario alone. And on the global scale, I think about 4.5% increase every year seen across the world. So this is quite uh, interesting. And um, the antimicrobial resistance in NTM can be innate or acquired. Uh, innate resistance is the inability of antibiotics to be um, up, uh, taken up by the bacteria due to the thick uh, microlic cell wall or true natural occurring genes in the bacteria that can expel or you know prevent the antibiotics to actually kill the bacteria. Additionally, you could also have acquired resistance, which is true development of mutations in the drug targets and um, also um, movement or transfer of additional genes through horizontal gene transfer from other bacteria that have these genes in the environment uh, through plasmids and um, et cetera. So um, I'm going to be moving on to REST Finder NTM, which is uh, an expansion of REST Finder, which is an open access tool that's used for detection of antimicrobial resistance genes from genomic data. And what REST Finder does is it uses your raw sequence reads or even your assembly genomes and it tries to predict antimicrobial resistance genes and phenotypes from a collection of databases that's been used from you know, studies that did uh, phenotypic tests on this bacteria. And they were able to see that these bacteria were resistant and these genes were present and are the reason for the resistance of this bacteria. And this database includes mutations. These are mutations that are in the target size of the um, bacteria that then would cause resistance and also genes that are associated with resistance. And this pay, um, this tool was published in Microbiogenomics and uh, you can have a look at it if you're interested in trying it out. So what we did with rest finding NTM was to, you know, not just look at um, what it does, which is um, Mycobacterium tuberculosis aside from other bacteria that are currently in the database, because we know there are other Mycobacteria that are associated with um, microbial resistance and diseases in humans. So we decided to include, um, you know, genes and mutations from these um, NTMs. So we did this by looking through peer-reviewed peer um, publications, uh, those that have done phenotypic assays on the two most prominent species of uh, NTMs, as avium and, abs and abscessus. And uh, we looked at mutations and genes that are associated with drug resistance. And what we did was to curate this into a new expanded database for the responder NTM. And this is currently hosted on GitHub, and it's undergoing continuous development. So we plan to include other um, clinical relevant NTMs into this. So if you're interested in trying this out, you can uh, look at the QR code here on the screen. So the workflow is simple. So basically, it um, uses the current um, REST Finder uh, version. And here you have the, um, the gene and mutation database that are currently on REST Finder, and then we expanded the database by including those four avium and abscessors that we found were um, validated um, genes and mutations. And then these can take into five formats, which is the raw reads or your assembly genomes, uh, using two different modes that came out and blast to search for resistance or genes through mutations or um, the presence of of genes in a database. And this would then produce an AMR report which can be integrated into like a um, clinical laboratory information system or even surveillance reports for public health. So we also um, included a, a utility script that can help you merge your 100 reports into a single summary file. Uh, for those who have lots of samples and you want to look at everything in just a simple output file rather than going through hundreds of files. And also, 
um, like I mentioned, the database um, uses uh, faster files of the genes and also CSV file that contains the mutations such as um, indels and uh, point mutations and specific position where these mutations are and relevant genes or ribosomal RNA that are associated with these mutations or this resistance rather. And we also have the pop embed um, um, idea of the papers that have you know done this work so that those who identify these mutations you can go back to read the paper and then you know um, understand or see what they've done if you're interested and uh newly added genes uh and mutations are also verified upon you know addition to the database and what we did uh, for the verification purposes was we took um raw and assembled genome of the two species we had in this database, and then we passed it into the um, the tool to test for accuracy. And we used to defend five modes, the fast queue and then the assemblage um, um, genomes for this analysis. And um, what we noticed was that we had 100% um, sensitivity to through the two detection modes. However, we did see a little bit of um, drop in the um, Specificity for, sorry, sensitivity rather for avium using the uh, faster blast, and I think this was associated due to the quality of the assemblies that we had. Um, so um, the use cases for this um, is for clinical labs, those that have integrated genomics into their routine diagnosis, they can actually use this to you know, um, check for antimicrobial resistance in the isolates that they've grown in the lab or they've sequenced. And also public health labs will undergo in public, um, sorry, genomic surveillance and then research institutions as well. So in the future, we are looking at, you know, including other NCMs, clinical relevant NCMs into uh, this software um, because we know that these NCMs are usually associated with respiratory infections and even skin infections also. So it's interest, It's important for us to be able to monitor and see what genes are involved in mutations, sorry, involved in resistance of antibiotics. Um, so I would like to end my talk here and uh, special thanks to my supervisor and our collaborators and my lab members. And um, um, I'm grateful to the BOSC organizers as well for allowing me to give a talk at this conference. Thank you very much, everyone. Quick question. I mean, so what are you, uh, your approach for assessing the influence or significance of gene mutation, uh, you know, regarding to uh, you know, uh, a drug resistance? So, are you have you taken into like the binding site? Have I taken what? Binding site between binding. the drug and the target. Um, no, we haven't taken binding site into that. So, what we looked at are mutations that are present in the genes that have been validated through um, phenotypic assays. So they've grown, people who've grown this um, bacteria in the lab and they've tested them with drugs. And if like the picture I showed where you have the zone of clearance or zone of um, resistance, uh, where they did realize that the bacteria is actually resistant to such drugs at certain concentrations. So that's what we actually look at. But we so didn't you're take using the assay data? Part of as yeah. validation. Yeah. So yeah, I was just wondering if you can take into account, I mean, the, you know, knowing knowledge, uh, mm -hmm. you know, about you know the dry, you know, how the dry spines target, so whether that will help. Yeah. So for the future, we would obviously consider that into like you know the res the mechanism of resistance, so people can know how um, the drugs or the, the sure. bacteria are resistant yeah. to such drugs. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.